The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by High Stick NT, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and Pride Seeds. So, horse in your presentation today, selecting high yielding soybean genetics. Take us through your top tips, your top recommendations for finding a high yielding bean. So, before we do that, I think it's very important to recognize that the soybean breeders, and I'm not a soybean breeder, but we have quite a few in the province, both public and private, are making real progress in terms of yield. And that's really what we are talking about here. I mean, there's other factors, disease resistance and insect resistance, and those are important. But really, yield still trumps everything because you can never make up for yield with high prices. So, how good are some of these genetics? It's pretty amazing, right? We've had some yields over 90 bushels, even in large-scale trials, and over 80 bushels in commercial fields. So what am I getting at? You can't do that with a variety that's 30 years old. Uh, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, because if the conditions are perfect, some of those older varieties are very good. But as a general statement, you know, when you look at the performance data that is um, generated every year. So there's 15 sites across the province where the Oil and Protein Seed Crop Committee organizes those public performance trials. Um, and most of the genetics are tested in terms of the commercial varieties. There's a huge spread within each of those trials, as much as a 10 bushel difference. So, you know, that makes quite a difference in soybeans if you're at 50 bushels or 60 bushels, obviously. So when you're considering a soybean variety, certainly yield should be right at the top of your priority list. And so how do you know really, you know, how it performs to other varieties? We don't do a lot of on-farm testing. There is some, uh, and there's of course company data, which is legitimate, but it's limited as well. So we would really push you to uh, the webpage gosoy.ca, which takes you right to the the public performance trials, right? And if you go to the performance section, um, it has on there, when you when you click on that tab and you go to the, uh, either you have to go to the Roundup or the conventional trials, but you click on that and then you scroll down, those people that are doing the web page for us, uh, for the committee, have done a real good job with that. And it has on there nice charts with days to maturity across the bottom and yield across the side. And it's a quick visual way of seeing what the yield potential is of varieties in a given site and over a multiple number of years. And you know, we often say, you know, it's very complicated picking the right variety because it depends on the site, it depends on the year. Well, yes and no, actually it's not that hard. That's one good thing about soybeans is that if you've got a winner and you've tested it for a few years, ah, you know what, it's a winner. So what I'm getting at is choose a variety that's at the top of those performance trials and it's pretty hard to go wrong. Of course, the other side of it is you always want to spread your risk. So I don't ever recommend just choosing one variety. I would say at least three on your farm and if you're a big player, you need even more, right? Because you spread your risk that way. Uh, so the other thing I think that is maybe uh, worth mentioning is that when you consider uh, soybean genetics, it's also important that you really assess the maturity zone that you're in. And this is something we're struggling with a little bit in the, in the research community. How long of a maturing bean should you actually plant? Because we've pushed our planting dates a little earlier, and that also means that they finish a little earlier in the fall. And we know that if you plant a longer day bean, on average, right, if you pick just on average the number, uh, a variety, it yields more. So we've done quite a few trials there, and we've shown actually that if you plant relatively early, so that's late April, first part of May, a long maturing variety by about one full maturity group, it will finish at the same time, essentially within a day 
of picking a more traditional, adapted, recommended, whatever you want to call it, variety, planted mid-May. So what does that mean? Well, why would you not grow a longer season bean if you can get it in early? Because there's four extra bushels there for you on average, two to four, depending on which data set you look at. It's a pretty big number in the soybean world, right? So we're kind of, at least I'm struggling with what is the right recommendation? And it's not just about, you know, having an open fall. If we're planting them earlier, they finish at the same time anyway.